Let us bring in Congressman James Palmer, who is a ranking member of the House Oversight Committee. Congressman, good morning to you. How do you think the Biden administration is going to respond to this temporary pause by the Supreme Court? I think if they were being honest with themselves, they would admit that they don't want Title 42 to end, even though they've been advocating for it. Well, I don't know that they do want it to. I mean, this is the Biden border policy, an open border policy. Uh, this is consistent with where they've been from day one. Over the past two years, this administration has turned the Border Patrol into the welcoming committee. They want more people to roll into the United States. They believe this is part of their uh, social equality campaign to fundamentally change America. They don't care about what this is costing the American taxpayers. They don't care about what this is doing to the crime rate, all the fentanyl, all the human trafficking that's pouring into our country. They don't care. They want to continue to pander to the left wing uh, to make it appear that they're welcoming and they're making you know this country open to anyone in the world who wants to go there. So uh, I give my hats off to the attorneys general who are doing the right thing, doing everything in their ability to try to do what this administration has failed to do, and that is to secure the border with the one tool, the one tool that we have in the toolbox, Title 42, to send people back to where they came from. Yeah, I think it goes a step further. I think this stay really does expose the hypocrisy of the Biden administration and forces them to put their money where their mouth is. Yeah. On the one hand, they're like, uh, we believe in the border. We want more funding for uh, it. We love border security, quote unquote. But it's also now going to be forced to oppose Title 42 in court for the whole world to see by 5 p.m. today. What's your take? Well, that's that's a great point. And, you know, everything's about more money for the Biden administration. Uh, w when they say the Republicans haven't funded this, you, we would love to cut off all funding for everything and have a discussion about how to secure this border. There is no telling how much they have uh, cost the American taxpayers on transportation costs, housing costs, Medicaid costs, uh, food and clothing costs public education costs, security costs. It goes on and on and on. We can't get anywhere near a full accounting of what this has already cost. And then they have the nerve to stand up and say the Republicans uh, need to give them more money so that they can do their job to secure the border. They don't want to secure the border. They want an open border, but they'll do anything they can to try to extract more money from the taxpayers of America. Yeah, the Wall Street Journal is reporting that the Biden administration is working on a replacement uh, policy if Title 42 does, in fact, end. And they're landing on essentially limiting asylum uh, claims at the border, but allowing people to apply for asylum before entering the country and then flying here, which sounds a, a whole lot like something the former president, former President Trump, was advocating for. What's your reaction to that? Well, President Trump had the correct border policy. And the, the problem with what the Biden administration is trying to do, playing both sides in this issue, is there's no way to process all these people. The courts are backlogged. ICE is backlogged. They don't have a full accounting of, of anywhere near the number of people that have come across the border. If we have 15,000 people crossing the border every day, the, the, the federal government only has the capacity to process about 500 of those. And that's at its best. So you know, everything that they have come by, Everything they've tried to justify their position and their failures on securing the border just won't hold up because this administration has created a crisis at the southern border. It's only getting worse every day. We have to have what little tools we have in place, like Title 42, to send these people back to where they came from. But at the very least, we need to let the Border Patrol do their job. This administration continues to tie the hands of the Border Patrol. As I said earlier, they've turned the Border Patrol into the welcoming committee. We need to have a military presence on the border, and we need to send a, the statement to the world that we have a secure border, and you're not allowed to come to the United States without uh, uh, filling out the proper paperwork and applying for citizenship like the law states. Congressman, now to a topic that you have been focused on, quite frankly, for years, even though you don't, didn't necessarily know the extent of it until, yeah. until the Twitter fires, files were released. This is fascinating. According to a new round of Twitter files, there really was an insane symbiosis between Democrats and 
FBI and Twitter. This whole kind of symbiosis was just at the highest level. So uh, I guess when you guys get into the majority there in a couple of weeks, what are you going to do to further expose what Elon Musk and these amazing journalists, Greenwald, Taibbi, and um, uh, the, Matthew, uh, the other guy, have exposed so far? Right. Well, thank goodness for Elon Musk. He's being transparent. He's done a great service to America. He's exposed a corrupt FBI. As I said earlier in earlier interviews, I really thought that maybe this was one or two rogue FBI employees that were going to Twitter that maybe uh, were, were liberal. They disliked Donald Trump for whatever reason. They wanted to do everything they could to get Joe Biden in as president. But what we have found now, thanks to Elon Musk, is there was a whole agency of 80 FBI agents. Yeah. We also learned that they have paid Twitter over $3 million. This is just Twitter. We haven't even gotten to Facebook, Google, YouTube, and the other platforms. Nowhere has Congress ever uh, authorized the FBI to do anything like this. This is the federal government censoring free speech with taxpayer expenses. This is wrong. Uh, the FBI does not have the authority to do this, and they need to be held accountable. On day one, we're going to start bringing in Twitter employees. Uh, we're going to get the truth. We're going to get names. We're going to know every employee that was involved in this. Then we're going to start bringing in the FBI. In. And then my goal is, at the end of this, and as soon as possible, we can fundamentally reform the FBI, get new leadership at the top, and try to put checks and balances in place to where this never happens again. Yeah, you mentioned those 80 agents working on election uh, misinformation. And during Michael uh, Schellenberg's Part 7 Twitter files released Michael. yesterday, uh, it, it, he revealed that Twitter executives repeatedly told the FBI that there was very little Russian misinformation on Twitter. And then FBI agents were sort of pushing back, kind of S somewhat upset by that fact or thinking that Twitter executives may have been missing something. But if that is genuinely the case and there wasn't a whole lot of Russian misinformation on the platform, how do you explain those 80 agents? I mean, who signed off on that? Because that c can't be the best use of their time or taxpayer money. No, we have a crime crisis in America. This was the second biggest issue behind inflation uh, with midterm voters was the crime rates. And now we learn we have 80, at least 80, FBI agents who were assigned to try to find disinformation on social media platforms. The problem I have with all this, beyond the fact that they never had the authority to do this, and this is a real example of the deep state here, is the fact that the FBI had the Hunter Biden laptop all along. They knew darn well that it was legitimate, and they knew darn well that there was information on there that was very damaging to Joe Biden's campaign for president. They knew that there was proof on there that showed the Biden family had been influence peddling with our adversaries for over a decade. Yet they went to these social media platforms. We've heard Zuckerberg say it at Facebook. And we know that they did it to Dorsey at Twitter and said, this is Russian disinformation. They lied to yeah. the social media companies and, and forced them to censor speech. And it wasn't just on the Hunter Biden laptop story. It, we're, we're continuing to see more cases of this to the fact to the tune that they were meeting regularly and paying these social media platforms for their time. Nowhere were they authorized to do this. This has to stop and people have to be held accountable. And that should be a top priority for Republicans yeah. in the majority in a couple of weeks. Couldn't agree more with that. I mean, when you look at this, it looked like the FBI was running Twitter. And boy, right. when you think about about Section 230 immunity now seems like mm -hmm. the perfect time to investigate that. You'll have an opportunity to do that yeah. in about two to three weeks. Congressman James Comer, thank you, sir, thank as you, always. Congressman. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.